Welcome to CAE Pilot Podcast, a podcast that brings together aviation professionals to discuss life as a pilot, training, and career advice. You can find us at cae.com forward slash CAE Pilot dash podcast or subscribe to our show on your audio podcasting platform of choice. You can also find our video podcast on our YouTube channel. Hi there, Brian. Welcome to uh, the CAE Pilot Podcast. Um, we're thrilled to have you. You are a team lead for recruitment at CAE Park Aviation, and um, you're going to talk to us uh, today about um, the current environment for pilots. So welcome, and uh, tell us, where are you joining us from today? Thanks so much for having me uh, on the podcast today. I really pre- appreciate the invitation. Tell us about uh, yourself a little bit. What's, what's your background? How did you get into uh, you know, the recruitment of pilots? Yeah, so um, I joined, as, I've actually got over five years experience now in pilot recruitment. Um, I joined CAE Park Aviation in uh, 2015. Um, and I'm now working in the recruitment division as a team leader. Um, so I was always interested in aviation growing up. Um, and uh, I obviously I didn't become a pilot, but uh, I'm, I suppose I'm the next best thing as, as, a, as a recruitment, uh, working in recruitment for pilots. So, yeah. Well, I'm sure that there are many pilots who uh, will see you as a, a very good friend for, for being able to place them uh, amongst these 70 airlines. Um, and tell us about working in recruitment at CAE Park. Yeah, so uh, the first thing I'd say, Patrick, it's a very fulfilling uh, job, you know. So we're able to support um, the pilots, firstly, on their journeys. Uh, so uh, getting them on contract with ourselves, sometimes it can take between, let's say, for example, it would be between two months and maybe even 12 months. So uh, working with them along their journey during the recruitment process and then you know, helping them and assisting them to, to actually, uh, you know, land their dream job in many cases is very, very satisfying. You know, to have that, to help people, in this case pilots, you know, uh, you know uh, get, or get to where they want to be in their professional careers is just great because we do form very, uh, you know, lasting relationships with them. And then, you know, they will come back to us when they do want to change jobs again uh, in the future. And, and very often they'll stay with us on contract for, for many, many years until retirement. So um, that is, that's great about it. And also, you know, uh, servicing our, our customers, those 70 airlines you mentioned, um, working with them on an ongoing basis and helping them grow and meet their, their goals is, uh, is also very satisfying and helping them with their, with their crew resourcing uh, on an ongoing basis. And obviously, we, we, you know, uh, we've got, you know, a lot of those airlines, have, we've been working with them for, for many, many years. And um, you know, that's obviously, it's, it's, it's always great uh, satisfaction for us to, to be helping, helping them all uh, grow uh, as well over the years. So tell me what it's like to make that phone call when you've told the pilot, you know what, we've uh, got a position for you. Tell me about how you feel about being able to make that type of phone call. It must be amazing. That's one of the, the best parts of the job for sure. I am, you know, I suppose it's delivering happiness in many ways. Uh, so, yeah, that that's really is good. And, and you, as I said, you do get to know them on a very personal level. Um, and, you know, everyone obviously has different motivations in their careers. And uh, when you do get them uh, you know, over the line, I should say, you know, a job offer, you know, for, with their dream, with their employer and their dream job, it's making that call is definitely. Uh, Definitely very satisfying and uh, makes it all worthwhile. And another thing you mentioned during, uh, in what you were just saying, is uh, I don't know if you've probably seen the previous uh, podcast that we've done, but we've talked to um, a number of pilots from different, uh, different backgrounds and pilots who've come out of our own flight academies. And they've talked a lot about the time it takes to find a uh, a permanent role. So I find it interesting that you say, you know, it takes between, I think you said two and 12 months or in that, that range to, um, to find a job. And one of the questions that uh, I've asked uh, the other people we've had on the podcast is what have you done in between time? So there was one gentleman who's today a business aviation pilot. And he said, listen, I cleaned airplanes and I met someone who needed a pilot and that's how I got into business aviation. And that's what I'm doing today. So t- what do you suggest to pilots or is there a suggestion to pilots who are qualified, 
Uh, maybe they've just come out of a flight academy. Maybe they're right now looking for a position. What do you always suggest to them to do in between the time when, you know, they start looking for a job and they find, uh, they find that role? Yeah, so uh, my advice would be uh, for them to, so, uh, to definitely stay within the industry if possible. Um, uh, definitely try to, uh, if they're looking for their first job, um, try to stay within the industry and, and if possible, you know, go to their local flying school um, and, and try to become an instructor in their local flying schools, you know, on, on small aircraft types. Because um, when they do go then to, to get, you know, that first big interview for their first, you know, commercial job and, you know, with an airline, um, as a co-pilot, let's say, they can say, well, look, look, this, since I graduated, um, you know, in the, in the last six months or 12 months, I, I've kept myself within the industry and kept my flying skills up. Um, and, they, you know, they'll have something to talk about. So it's not, as you said, a gap in the CV. Um, so, yeah, that, that would be my suggestion. Um, if that's not possible, you know, as you mentioned, that, that pilot you spoke to, who was working in the airport uh, doing, doing something else. That's advice. That that's you know going to be a good option too, just to stay within the industry if possible, um, in preparation for for that big big interview and and the first the first the first big job as a, as a pilot as such. So, um, yeah, that would be my advice. And and I think that's good advice. And in a lot of ways, it's it's very uh, apropos of the time we're living in today. Um, you know, over the you know during the pandemic, things have clearly changed uh, within the airline industry. Um, so what have you seen, um, in the market over the past three months? Yeah, you know, uh, for sure, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, has had an, an impact on, on the av- aviation industry for sure. Um, and pilots have definitely been affected, but, um, you know, their employments have been affected in some cases, but, you know, what I would say is, you know, we're, I believe anyway, we're coming out of this pandemic at the moment. Um, we're definitely on the way out of it. Uh, and, you know, you know, pilots will get back in the cockpits you know, very soon. I know a lot of airlines are, are already pre-planning, you know, operations uh, and getting getting aircraft back in the air, and, and that means pilots back in in the cockpit seats. So, um, although it might feel like a long time now that they could, they're grounded, you know, possibly three months in some cases, I believe that you know things are things are starting to move and. Uh, there's green shoots in the industry. Um, you know, you know, even cargo pilots uh, are very busy at the moment, doing some some great work, um, you know, delivering healthcare in, in many cases and uh, healthcare supplies and things. So, uh, but but for pilots who are who have been affected, you know, uh, air, air travel will come back, and I'm sure they they realise that. So I suppose patience is, is key at the moment, and and. Um, and keeping themselves current and, and trying to keep their skills refreshed where possible, and, and be ready for for uh, when things do do take off again you know and i've noticed uh some small videos that i've seen more on our training side of companies like brussels airlines etc who are whose pilots are going back through training really getting ready to start up um later this month so i think uh you know there are positive signs um it's funny what you say about uh, cargo pilots as well i read recently that anchorage the airport in anchorage became at certain points in the past little while the busiest airport in the world and of course most of that due to uh cargo flying so it's one of those things that people might not think about um (laughs) right off the bat but um we've spoken to two cargo pilots who have remained uh quite busy uh during this time we've also talked uh you know we talked a little bit about uh you know getting your first job but what do you suggest to pilots where should pilots who might not be flying right now whose jobs have possibly been affected where do you suggest they uh start the process of getting back into flying yeah so um i would strongly suggest um that they can uh, visit uh, visit our website at cae and um, uh, go to the civil uh, section and then go to pilot jobs uh, register with us there um, and you know what we're going to do is we're obviously going to keep them updated as things progress in the industry they'll be notified with, with market updates from a recruitment standpoint most importantly for, the, for those affected by this pandemic um, so they'll be aware of all of the, the opportunities that are coming up so that'd be my first piece of advice um, my second piece of advice would be that they need to probably use this time to reflect uh, on their careers to date um, and think about where they want to be over the next five years. So 
Um, although they might think, you know, pilots have been affected, they might think, uh, they might start to think that I, I just need a job. Uh, but use this time to think about, well, what, are, what do I really want in my, in my, next, uh, in my next job? Uh, is it, is it a, a base location close to home? Is it, you know, do they want to experience flying overseas, being based abroad and commuting home? Or uh, is it something they're looking for a, st- a stable airline, for a stable employment? Or, you know, the list goes on. So, uh, they just need to think about that. Um, other bits of advice I could say would I would say is you know getting if they have been affected uh, and they're now kind of you know they find themselves maybe looking for for a new job. I'd say um, to get their documentation in order. Some pilots maybe haven't done an interview in many years. Uh, it could be their first time uh, you know back on the job market. So now is the time before hiring starts again. Uh, you know a lot of hiring starts. They should look at their CVs and. Um, you know, and have have uh, a look at how you know they can put that together, and you know, obviously, contact information, flying experience is very important. Listing the hours on the various aircrafts, um, you know, outlining their their date of last flight and uh, uh, instrument rating on their license, and um, and any educational uh, history or any instruction duties they might have had as well. So, uh, and then getting all of the rest of the flight crew documents like license, um, medical. Uh, logbook last six pages. Get it. Try to get it, uh, the logbook page uh, signed and stamped by the employer would be uh, important. And uh, getting access to any of their last proficiency checks reports, uh, proficiency check reports, uh, they should be able to access them. Uh, and then also reference letters um, if they can get dates of employment from previous employers or or reference letters. That all, having all of these things ready um will certainly help them uh, position themselves in, in a good place to to uh, act quickly as opportunities start to arise and what we'll do is uh, i think that's some phenomenal advice and we'll put a link uh, in the description to the podcast um and in the video that goes on youtube to that section in um uh, on cae's website um I, I think we should also mention that uh CAE is working on uh, what we're calling a pilot platform. It'll be called Airside. Um, and you just want to tell us a tiny little bit about, uh, about that. Yeah, so um, it's, it's, I believe at the moment it's, it's, it's getting closer to being, uh, to being launched. Uh, it's going to be a very good resource for pilots to, to access some key information uh, about how they can, you know, uh, be best, you know, be ready and uh, for interviews when when they start again. So there's great information there about how to uh, how to be prepared for video interviews and um, you know actual face to face interviews. And it's a very very good resource for for uh, for that for assessments and, and and being prepared for all of that. So um, I, I'd strongly recommend you know people to 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 access that through CAE, and it's it's a great initiative from CAE to to get that together, and it just shows the support that. That we're doing for for our, for the pilot community out there, and you know it's it's great to see. And we'll also put the link to uh, to Airside in in the podcast as well. Um, you mentioned the possibility. Now we know that uh, you know there's going to be a significant amount of change and um, restructuring potentially in airlines that might require pilot to relocate, as you were saying, either to move somewhere else to commute, etc. Um, what, um, what suggestions do you have or what should be considered when thinking about a position that's not, um, where you live today? Yeah. So I suppose there is a few things that I would say. So, um, first thing is being comfortable psychologically, I suppose, with the, with the prospect of, of moving abroad and living abroad. So, you know, pilots can ask themselves, am I comfortable with, you know, leaving potentially family and friends at home? Um, many of them will be because it, it, probably a lot of them are used to long trips away. But that would be the first thing. Um, other bits of thing or other bits of advice I'd, I'd 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 give the pilots is to see where you know the accommodation set up and the lifestyle that they might they might uh, face when when working abroad, and they can talk to their recruitment consultant about that. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we have local support, so uh, we're well able to advise pilots on. Who are on contract with us about you know where are the best places to live and uh, to make their lifestyle better and in relation to commuting to and from you know uh, duty, um, I would you know basic things like vaccinations as well for certain regions, um, you know getting work work permits in order, 
Um, and very importantly, from a uh, family for the uh, pilots who already have a, a family uh, that they're going to bring abroad with them, they, they need to consider the, the educational needs for their kids, obviously. So uh, international schools is very important. Um, you know, mo- most uh, cities now uh, will, will have those available. So just speaking to your recruitment consultant and all of those, all, all of those things will help. Uh, also insurance and health insurance is obviously very important when abroad, working abroad. And again, you know, we support our pilots fully uh, with insurance packages and, you know, and that. So um, they'd be things that would spring to mind uh, initially for them to consider. Um, if they're going to commute, they can also think about the commuting roster that, you know, that, that, that they would like and that they're interested in. Uh, so to make sure that, you know, they're getting home to visit family on a regular basis. So um, they're all things, yeah, that I, 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 I'd say. I, I worked for Air Canada many years ago, and I knew flight attendants who commuted from Australia to Vancouver. Wow. Um, and so there's a lot of considerations in terms of uh, commuting, um, you know, the standby travel. Uh, and also, I would imagine, um, typically in an airline, you get your passes after a certain amount of time. So I think people might have to sit there and think, okay, well, for the first three, six months, I might not have access to, to a travel privilege. So what, what do people do in that case? Yeah, it varies. I suppose it varies. As you know, we do work with over you know seventy airlines, and um, generally, uh, there's an initial training period that they'll that they'll have to do. Uh, it varies again from airline to airline, but in that initial training, you know, getting home generally can be limited. To op- you know, in the initial couple of months, um, but then once they get to start fly, the, once they begin to fly the line. Um, they can, uh, they'll generally uh, speaking, you know, they're given tickets to get home, ID90 tickets. And in some cases, uh, you know, they might be given business class tickets home or economy class tickets, confirmed tickets home. So it's usually, you know, without, you know, there's the odd exception, but, but generally um, they are provided, which is great because, uh, you know, it's, it's very, it is important, for, you know, for, for pilots who do plan to commute uh, to home that they're, that they're given that, that, those tickets. They're all important considerations, uh, I think. Um, one, though, that experienced uh, pilots, I'm sure, have, have experience with uh, already, but nonetheless, some good uh, advice there. Um, now, let's, let's get to the interview process, because you talked a little bit about that. Um, how do you think interviews will be conducted once airlines um, you know, start recruiting post-pandemic? Yeah, I, I believe that um, technology is going to play a key role, um, de- you know, for sure. So uh, I believe, you know, video interviews for, uh, are certainly going to be uh, something that airlines are going to lean on uh, as a resource for, for beginning recruitment processes. Um, uh, and uh, beyond that, you know, there, there could even be more, introdu- you know, they could lean on technology even more. But certainly video interviews um, will, will be used. I mean... A lot of airlines already use them, um, but I can see those who don't will probably start to, to introduce it. Um, it's obviously with the when they're trying to scale up quickly, you know, it, you know, getting pilots and um, through the process via, via uh, technology now is very quick rather than getting someone to fly across the world. So, um, and also from in the initial stages, if there is um, still cons- travel restrictions by governments with with the pandemic, it might be really the only option to to start pr- recruitment processes. Um, obviously, you know, uh, other parts of the assessment process, it might, you know, sim, sim assessments will, will, uh, will obviously need to be taking place in, in the sim centers. Um, so, um, but it, yeah, vi- I think video is going to be great for, for getting the uh, initial HR uh, interview done with the, with the chief pilot and that side of things. It's going to be good. And we've all gotten used to the Microsoft uh, Teams environment and it's really uh, incredible how our way of working has uh, has changed with these tools. So there's no reason why um, that can't be extended elsewhere. To wrap things up, I think that you have given a wealth of phenomenal um, information. Um, you know, what would be your final piece of advice for you know pilots out there who you know are either not flying because of the situation or are currently flying looking for another opportunity what would you suggest to uh to people right now okay yeah so in summary patrick um would be firstly for um to do an initial reflection on your career to date as a pilot and 
then look forward and say, well, where do I want to be in five years? Um, do I want to remain flying? If so, where do I want to fly? Um, what's going to be my motivating factor? Um, and then, you know, also consider, do I want a career maybe outside the cockpit as an instructor? So evaluate exactly where you want to go in the next five years. Uh, and then begin to, as I said earlier on, you know, uh, get your documentation uh, ready. So when the market, you know, really takes off again uh, shortly, uh, hopefully then you'll be well positioned to start applying quickly to the different roles. Um, if possible, if you, if you're, if you find yourself um, out of, out of employment, you know, try to stay within the industry where possible. Uh, if you're looking for temporary employment. Um, and then, you know, making sure that you keep your license current by, you know, doing an LPC check, um, you know, that, that's also going to be, make yourself, um, you're going to position yourself uh, well you know, for, for when hiring starts again. And then, uh, you know, making sure that you're registered with ourselves. So you're kind of kept updated with, with kind of market developments, uh, in relation to recruitment, uh, that will be opening up over, over the coming, uh, weeks and months, uh, ahead. So, um, and, and then uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but again, the online presence, uh, either if, if you don't have a, a profile uh, online to, to certainly uh, on the networking sites, uh, professional ne networking sites and, uh, you know, definitely look at that. And, uh, and if you're unsure about, you know, CVs, uh, you know, I think the airside tool will, will, will be launching soon. So there's, that's going to be a really good resource as well for people to, to, to look at. Um, and uh, you know, considering the the options as regards relocation or commuting that I touched on earlier as well, thinking about all of those and the impact it can have on your your individual situation, and that that'll, that'll really make your mind up for you as well. So, um, that those, that would be my the, the takeaways I, I'd give to the to the listeners today. I can't thank you enough, Brian, for having taken the time uh, to uh, to talk to us. I think you've. You know, you've probably given our audience a lot to think about, a wealth of information. Again, they can go to ce.com on our civil page. They can, uh, they can click on pilot jobs and register with us. Um, thanks again for being on the CA Pilot Podcast. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll do it again on another, on another great topic. Patrick, thanks so much for having me on again. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I hope um, everything was helpful for our pilot community and, and uh, I look forward to, to working with yourself again, maybe in the future, if you can have me on, uh, it, it, would, it would be great. Uh, thanks again. Thank you. Cheers. CAE Pilot Podcast is brought to you by CAE, the global leader in training for the civil aviation, defense and security, and healthcare markets. For more information, check out CAE.com.